Good evening and welcome to Worship at Home. My name is Dylan Zoke, if you have not met me yet, and I am the DCE intern here at Galilee Lutheran Church. Tonight we have three marvelous people in ministerial studies that are going to be leading worship this evening. The first person is Abby Hilpert, who is going to be starting her journey in the DCE program in Concordia University, Texas as a tornado whoosh. The second person is Chris Carver, who is going to be starting his ministerial studies at Grand Canyon University. And lastly is myself. I am still a part-time student finishing my DCE program studies as well during this time in my life. And if you have a hymnal at home and would like to follow along, we will be starting on page 260 and 261. And if you don't have a hymnal, don't worry about it because we sent out an email yesterday that has it in the PDF form. So if you would like to, you can still follow along in that aspect. And lastly, if you would like to help us out with leading worship at home, just reach out to Pastor Matt at his email, which is going to be right down here for you to look at and read. And if you have an interest, just reach out to him and say, hey, I would be interested in helping lead worship at home. And with that, let's get started. Be free. 
continue then with our opening versicles. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents along among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he will look at the bronze serpent and live. The word of the Lord. Our second reading of tonight comes from John chapter 16, verses 23 to 33, which read, In that day you will ask nothing of me, Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. 
ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you loved me and have believed that I came from God. I come from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good evening. As always, it's great to have you join us on Worship at Home, and I'm so thankful for Dylan and Abby, ministry students at Concordia, Texas. Abby starting this fall as a freshman in the DC program. Dylan in his uh, year of internship and looking to be called in this next year, praying that the Lord will hopefully guide us at Galilee and the church in a greater way to be able to continue to support both these individuals, as well as our other new ministry student, Chris Carver, who has began his studies in the ministry route at Grand Canyon University. It is a blessing to know how our Lord supports, raises up, and encourages new ministers and servants of his church in this world. Tonight's catechism readings come from Luther's small catechism, first from the Lord's Prayer, the introduction and the conclusion, and then from the table of duties for those who are church workers, pastors and preachers and teachers, and those who are the hearers, the members of the congregation. So the first is the introduction to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children. So that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear father. Then from the conclusion, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What does this mean? This means that I should be certain that these petitions are pleasing to our father in heaven and are heard by him. For he himself has commanded us to pray in this way, and he is promised to hear us. Amen, amen, means yes, yes, it shall be so. And then from the table of duties, as Chris mentioned last week, it's nice to be reminded of these duties as far as the scripture teaches. The first two are from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 through 4, and verse 6. And the next one is from, from Titus chapter 1, verse 9. The first one says, The overseer must be above reproach. The husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. And then from verse 6 of chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, he must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. And then from Titus 1.9, he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message that has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. And then what the hearers owe to their professional church workers, pastors, and teachers. These come from 1 Corinthians 9, 14, Galatians 6, verses 6 and 7, 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, and also from Hebrews 13, 7. The first one from 1 Corinthians 9, 14. The Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. And then from Galatians 6, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Then from 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18, the elders who direct the affairs of the church are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. And then from 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, who admonish you, who hold them up in the highest regard, in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And lastly, from Hebrews 13, 17, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. Keep watch, over your, your, keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. Wonderful messages from the Lord's word on how we are to represent him, how we are to listen to his word, realizing it is always God who is our ultimate shepherd, 
who guides and cares for us through his church workers. And so we pray today, as we do every day, for those going to the church ministry, for those that might be raised up and recognize their gifts, and for those who are currently serving the Lord in this way. Galilee is an amazing congregation. I am so grateful for you and seeing how many other lives are touched through our love. It's just a tremendous joy. Hey, have a wonderful evening and take it away, Chris. Thank you to Dylan for this week's opening and our New Testament reading, Abby for our Old Testament reading this week, and Pastor Matt for our catechism lesson on the introduction and the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer as well as the Table of Duties. I love the Table of Duties. Lots of good nuggets of information in there. Before we dive into this week's message, let's join together in a brief time of prayer. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own, and to confirm those who have come to the saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lips, and from the lips to the life that as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In that last part, very integral and integrated into this week's message, dear saints. And this week, we are going to pick right up where we left off two weeks ago, where Jesus told his disciples that he would soon leave them, but soon after he would then see them again and their hearts would rejoice. As we continue through this season of Easter, we are in a season where our hearts do rejoice week after week in the comfort and in the peace that he was raised from the dead as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We ask daily, weekly, sometimes even hourly, to be forgiven of our transgressions and our iniquities. The question is, do we ask these things of the Lord as if they are whimsical wishes, or do we truly ask in prayer and in forgiveness for those things that glorify the Lord? Let's kind of dive into the text this week now and see where that question takes us. Now, our text opens tonight with that very point. As Jesus tells us, in that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. At this point, the disciples had witnessed the teachings of Jesus Christ to the multitudes of many. And in this time, in this time, they had asked him questions about his teaching. They had asked him for favors on occasion, but they had at no time gone to the Father in Jesus' name to ask for anything. Now the Christ Jesus tells us clearly here, whatever you ask in the of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ and after his ascension into heaven, an event we will celebrate and honor next week, the disciples will pray directly to the Heavenly Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. We continue this commandment, or direction if you will, as we continue with the prayers that we call collects every week, that we say in our community services every Saturday and Sunday. And the prayers always conclude like this. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When we go to the Father and we ask in his name, we are being obedient to the commandments of Jesus Christ. Now, the disciples were a relatively obedient group of men who followed Jesus where he went, listening but not always understanding what it was that Jesus was teaching that day. Jesus even acknowledges that in tonight's text. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. Jesus tells us that he spoke to his disciples in these figures of speech, which we today refer to as parables, which is just a simple story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson as told by Jesus and recorded in all three of the synoptic gospels. Those are the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that are written in very similar styles and fashion. Parables are found in many ancient types of literature, where they are generally referred to as fables. However, even though Jesus spoke to the disciples in parables, he tells and promises them that the hour is coming, that he, when that will happen no more. He will speak plainly about the Father, and the disciples thought they had it. Now, I remember when my youngest son, Colin, he began to walk. He wanted to go everywhere, including up and down the steps. Now, it was just a short climb up the stairs, but he always wanted to, as I used to say, do by self. And boy, did he try. And much like the disciples tried here tonight. 
His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. We know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. No one that was with Jesus at that moment, as we're about to head off to the Garden of Gethsemane, questioned their loyalty to the Christ Jesus. They were beginning to understand and see him as the Son of God, even though they kind of have been told that about a thousand times at this point. Yet they still didn't get it. They would stumble, they would fall in their belief, just like my son Colin would stumble and fall trying to climb that first step the first time he tried. He was 0 for 1. One step up, one butt down. Good thing we had that awful 80s blue carpet at my house at the time. It kind of helped pad his fall a little bit. But even though the disciples thought they were ready to head out into the world and profess all that they knew about Jesus, he knew better. Jesus knew they weren't prepared. He reminds them again of the same thing that he told them in the opening. He tells them and us twice, so it must be important that in this day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask in the, ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. He tells us again, ask the Father in my name and he will give it to you. Not because we asked Jesus, but because we asked God the Father who loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his one and only begotten son to pay the ultimate sacrifice. He gave us his son to die for our sins. Jesus, in obedience to his Father, went to that cross for our sins to suffer, to die, and to be buried. Now, Jesus, again, in his infinite and omniscient wisdom, knew the disciples, again, were not ready to understand what he had spoken to them that fateful Friday night or early Saturday morning, whatever time of day it was. And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Now, after all Jesus had said, all he had done, all he had taught, all he had professed and prophesied, do you now believe? The disciples think they do, but their belief comes with a warning or a disclaimer, if you will. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to your own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Jesus knew in that moment that his hour was rapidly approaching. He also knew that the disciples would be gripped by fear and confusion. They did not even remotely understand the magnitude of what was about to happen. And even though they would scatter in fear, they needed to hear it again and plainly. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are with us every second of every day, ready to call, to lead, and to guide us through this path that is our earthly life. We are the called children of the Lord, willing to do the works that have, we have been called to do in honor and in glory to the living God. In those final moments of his earthly life, Jesus, of Jesus, we too would have gone and scattered each to our own homes. Don't think you would have done otherwise. And as much as, much like the Christ Jesus, we too, we're not alone. Now, did the disciples completely understand that? Well, absolutely not. Yet Jesus still tells them to reassure them, I have said these things to you that in my name you may have peace. Jesus knows what awaits these 12 men first. He also knew that in that moment, the fate of every believer from that day forward he knew they would face accusations, prosecution, and persecution. He knew 10 of the 12 men were with, that were with him that night would go on to die for their teachings and their beliefs in the Christ Jesus. One of them, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, I always love how he gets called out like that, he would go hang himself, as we discover in the Gospel of Matthew. John would go on to live a lengthier life and to die an old man around 98 AD or so in or near the town of Ephesus. He would be the only disciple to survive the religious persecutions that took place in the first century. And throughout all that, and all that taking place up to this point, Jesus knew a few things the disciples did not know, nor did they understand, for their minds had not been opened to the totality of the scriptures. They were about to abandon Jesus in his time of tribulation, and even though Jesus was abandoned by his disciples, he knew his father was with him. God the Father was about to forsake Jesus on the cross. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteous, become the righteousness of God. 
Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be our sin. He was the propitiation, the atonement for our sins, and he did that for us. As we close tonight's reading, we learn the depth and the breadth of the price Jesus Christ paid for us. But take heart, I have overcome the world. As Jesus hung on the cross and gave up his earthly life by saying, It is finished, the gift of atonement was about to manifest in his blood. We learn in the closing line of tonight's gospel, I have conquered the world. Three days later, he was resurrected, not only to atone for our sins, but as well as for the sins of all of humanity from Genesis all the way through until Revelation, until we have been, and through all of that as well, we have been granted a second gift. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, given to us by God the Father out of his love for us. For God the Father, as Jesus recounts in tonight's reading, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. We've earned these gifts out of our love for Jesus Christ and by our love only. There are no earthly tasks we can complete to earn these gifts. There's no checklists. The Christ Jesus has already taken care of those duties for us. And as we walk through our journeys in faith, as we go out and we share the good news, the Oyangelion, with all of the corners of the world, we sometimes feel that we are ready to conquer all that the Triune God has asked us to do right here, right now. Got to do it now. We sometimes become a little too confident in our skills to accomplish our callings, and we do not go to him asking for what we need to answer his call, whatever those callings may be. Now, Dylan, Abby, and myself... We're all answering calls to the Lord in various ways. Dylan is now concluding his professional training. Abby's beginning hers at Concordia Seminary in Austin, Texas. And I am returning to my studies at Grand Canyon University, go Lopes, to begin my professional training as well. Our calls to the Lord, they're not your calling. We've all been called to the Lord different times and different seasons of our lives, at different ages and in many different ways. But what we must understand is that we're not here to overcome and conquer the world. That task has been taken on and completed in the salvation, the death, and the resurrection in Jesus Christ on that cross. As we go forth to answer our callings, we must go to the Heavenly Father and ask Him for the tools that we need to accomplish our calls. The things we ask of the Father through Jesus Christ will be given to us in, to honor and to glorify His name. Sometimes the answer is going to be yes. Sometimes it's later. Mr. George Smith even likes to say that our prayers can even be given the answer of, are you kidding me? Still, sometimes the answer is no. Regardless of the answer, when we're called, we go. And we go in a loving kindness that has been granted to us by the Spirit so that we can go forth and serve the Lord. We're not here to overcome and conquer the world. That task has been completed. We're here to listen to the clarity of God's calling and to humbly, humbly serve the Lord as he has humbly and lovingly served us. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.
Please join with us in the prayers for this day. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those who work in is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those in our church family and our homes, as well as those who are scattered abroad in need of our prayers and petitions on this day, that we now lift up to you, Lord, in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank, thank you, you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Conclude with the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful evening and may peace be with you.
Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. If you are in the Pasadena, Maryland area and are looking for a church home, we would love to meet with you and give you more information on our family here at Galilee. Please give us a call here at the telephone number below. We would love to hear from you. If you are not in the Pasadena, Maryland area, but you are looking for a church home, again, please let us know so we can do our best to get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you to everyone who helped and participated during our service this weekend. We are truly blessed to have such a generous and faithful congregation devoted to sharing the word of Jesus Christ with you. And last but not least, if you enjoyed today's service, please click the like or the subscribe buttons to let us know that you enjoyed it. Please leave us comments if you so desire and sign up to receive notifications for our Saturday, our Sunday, and our Wednesday worship at home services. Have a blessed day. And God be praised. I am the DC intern here at Concordia. From Mount Hor, they set out by the, re- the way to the not quarrelsome, but a lover of money. Not a lover, not a lover of money. Not a lover of my Gotta try that all over again. Wow. Oh, well done.